the basic point here now that the idea of the Gabriel synthesis is that we're going to use a what we could fancifully call a nitrogen delivery vehicle. Uh, you can always think of it like a forklift. We're going to have a forklift that's picking up a nitrogen and delivering it to the alkyl group. So here's the nitrogen. All right, and then we need what do you call them? The tongs of the forklift that are going to hold on to the nitrogen. So here's one tong, and here's the other tong. All right, and it turns out that the effective way to do this is with an imide. If this is supposed to be an imide, we briefly talked about that at the beginning. Do you guys remember what functional group we should put here? Carbonyl. And down here? Carbonyl. That's right. Remember, an imide is carbonyl, nitrogen, carbonyl. Remember that we need a hydrogen here, because otherwise the nitrogen would not have the right number of bonds. All right, it turns out that this is the imide that we use. Uh, is this supposed to be um, benzene? No. No? I don't think so. Ah, sorry, it is. It is? This ring over here is a benzene ring. OK. OK, um, so we have a, a two cycles here. This definitely is a benzene ring. Um, and the common name for this is phthalic acid. No. Uh, this would be uh, the phthalamide. Phthal is just a common name, um, but we know why it's called imide. We know that this is a cyclic imide. But the very important thing to keep in mind is all of this, except for the nitrogen, is just apparatus. You should think of this whole thing here as just like the, um, the forklift that's bringing the nitrogen to the thing that's going to get uh, aminated. These are just like the prongs or the tongs that are holding the nitrogen. All of this stuff will eventually be burned away. None of this will be part of the final product. A um, couple of things to point out. This is not very nucleophilic anymore. This nitrogen is not very nucleophilic. So we need to give an explanation for why this nitrogen is less nucleophilic than a normal amine. Can we think of any reason why this might be less nucleophilic than a normal amine? Because the oxygens that are attached to the same carbon are pulling all the electrons there. Yeah. Why would you expect them to pull the electrons? Because they're more electronegative. That's right. That's not the most important effect, though. There's another explanation that's more important, even though that's a good one. For why this is not very nucleophilic. It's in a stable ring. What is it that's stabilizing it, though? So the big thing we're not using is oh, you. Resonance. Is that's right. Saying, then if it pushes over, then it pushes right. Over. So the explanation you gave before was good, but it was an induction argument. This term resonance is even more important than induction. We're always looking for resonance arguments. Now, it's crucial that you get the right charges here. If this starts neutral and loses electrons, it would end up positive. Does this explain why the nitrogen is not a very good nucleophile anymore? Well, yes, because nucleophiles are not things with positive charges. Putting a positive charge on something does not make it a good nucleophile. Negative things tend to be nucleophiles. So this is a good explanation for why this nitrogen is less nucleophilic than a normal amine nitrogen, um, because there's a resonance structure where it has a positive charge. And then on top of that, did you see there's another resonance structure where it has a positive charge? Because I could also put the electrons down here on this oxygen. So there's two resonance structures where the nitrogen would have a positive charge. So that way damps down its nucleophilicity. Remember, that was one of our big problems with the normal SN2 alkylation. The problem is that it was too eager to alkylate and it overalkylated. So we're already kind of seeing how this damps it down so it's not going to overalkylate. Um, okay. All right, so the uh, most important thing here is try to use resonance in your explanations uh, in this term in the course. That's the whole theme of the whole course. You don't usually have to draw those resonance structures, but you should always know in the back of your mind that they're there. In fact, um, so let's say, who, who do we want? So the problem here is that this actually can't be used as a nucleophile yet because it, it's too damped down. We've, we've overdone it. So what could we do to make this a better nucleophile? Yeah, with an acid or a base. base. Yeah, we want to use a base. Uh, the base that the book used was potassium carbonate. So, um,
I don't know how to draw card names. All right, so I won't do the method. But anyway. If you're doing a synthesis, would you have to show this, or could you just start with like the K on the N? It depends on the problem. Um, it depends on what they told you to start with, basically. Uh, in fact, um, eventually we have to learn how to make this, too. So we are kind of starting in the middle. All right, so it's possible that they could have just started you here, but that's not too likely. Usually they're going to start you here, and they're going to test whether you know to use the base. This is the typical, this is what people usually think of as the Gabrielle synthesis, is starting with a neutral MI and then deprotonating it. Okay, well, I didn't know quite how to show the mechanism here because I don't know the structure of carbonate. But anyway, this carbonate, this is a base. It's going to strip away a proton. That'll look like this. Now, normally nitrogens don't like having negative charges. Normally you cannot, I, we talked about this earlier. Remember how we said earlier that normally nitrogens are not acids and you can't take away their protons. Why is this negative charge more stable than a negative charge normally would be on a nitrogen? Yeah, the same thing we did before. We could draw another resonance structure where the negative charge is on this oxygen. Or we could draw another resonance structure where the negative charge is on this oxygen. In fact, maybe your instructor might draw those. But I'm going to draw the negative charge on this nitrogen because the whole point was to put the negative charge here. But we should remind ourselves in the back of our head that this is resonance stabilized. So unlike a normal nitrogen, um, this, you can strip away the proton over here. This is the whole reason why we don't just call these amines. This is the reason why we have to give them the name imides because they have resonance structures that amines don't have. How we make? How we made luminol? I don't even know what luminol is. Oh, yes, but it has like no two Oh, okay. So it's like is that something you did in the lab? Or? Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Okay. All right. So anyway, now we have this as a nucleophile, and now we just need to throw in an electrophile. So I suppose we could do what we did uh, before. Could throw in this electrophile. So uh, let's show the mechanism and the product from that step. Now notice, remember, ultimately all we're going to be left with is this. This here is just the machinery that is delivering the nitrogen to this alkyl group over here. This didn't have to just be one carbon. This could be any carbon chain that has a good leaving group on it. This could be any carbon chain. I just drew this because this was the example we did before. But this could be any carbon chain with a good leaving group. Although I guess uh, this would still probably work best for a primary or a methyl. Maybe it wouldn't work so good for a secondary. Because this basically is still an SN2. So this probably, I guess this still would not work for a tertiary um, alkyl halide. Now, we don't need to worry about overalkylation here because remember, this is not that good a nucleophile. Remember, it's not a good, such a good nucleophile because of those resonance structures. So now we've achieved our goal of just putting in the one alkyl group here. So now what do we have to do? Now we've got to burn off this machinery. Somehow now we've got to detach the nitrogen from the rest over here. Um, do you guys remember what, what could we do to break the nitrogen off from these? H plus H2O. Yeah. Why would that work? Why don't we go through the mechanism for that? To be specific here, I'll say we're using sulfuric acid. That's what they said in the book.
that you need another error to kick off the pipe on it. 